Well, first of all, I want to thank uh, Vivian, Lake, and John for joining me doing this. Um, they are the three instructors in our concept art program. Um, and I am, we're going to talk about uh, what we do in relationship, uh, relationship to portfolio. And we're going to talk a lot about portfolio development. We will talk about our classes and how it relates to portfolio. And um, you'll learn a little bit about our program along the way. Um, if you don't, I, I know there's people in here that don't know what we do at all, uh, that don't have any idea. Um, we have been, I have been blessed. I've been building art education for 27 years now. It's kind of an alternative uh, art education. And it's always been focused on helping people enter the industry, prepare themselves for the industry and cutting to the chase, uh, getting to things, you know, we don't have a uh, we don't have a liberal arts program that goes with it. Um, this is just the art aspect as it relates to working in the industry. Uh, years ago, that all used to be done. Like the only way you could find it, figure that out was connect to people in the industry. And, and what, and that's a big part of what we do is try to try to connect with community. So our next enrollment starts, uh, it closes 421. Our classes start a week from today. Um, in fact, we'll be just about an hour into classes uh, this time next week. So um, we get to, we get started next week. So let's get rolling here. Uh, first of all, in my mind, and I, I'm I have set this talk up as <laughs> uh, my perspective on this from the illustration side, and I'm representing the illustrate representing the illustration program, and these three are representing the concept art program. Um, we both know a lot uh, about each other, what each others do, and there's a huge amount of crossover. Uh, we allow crossover in our industry, in, in our uh, uh, program also. Um, but I really truly believe that portfolio is the thing that represents you, um, and it is the thing where success is going to come from. Um, so, with that, I'm going to start with I'm going to brag a little bit about. The, these are some students uh, from our illustration program from the last um, year. Um, they were all in the program within a year. And this is these are the industry resources for uh, Communication Arts Magazine, um, American Illustration, the Society of Illustrators. Spectrum hasn't happened this yet, yet this year, so we don't know what our, our success is going to be. But this is some examples from students that have attended the program and developed a really professional portfolio. This is Addie Green. Uh, I'm gonna have to move my uh, menu around here a little bit. Laura uh, Salafia uh, for American Illustration. Doug Bell for American Illustration. And you can see the work is, is has a lot of variety to it. Um, Julia, uh, Julia Nickel. This is Nate Schweitzer. Uh, he'll be a student with us uh, this semester also, this coming semester. Uh, this is Marian Martinsick. Um, this was two of the four pieces that she got in. She got the whole series in from a piece of, from a project she just did for Scientific America. Um, this was her success at the Society of Illustrators while she was a student in our, our program. Uh, the first <laughs> um, hasn't happened before in any of my programs that that little gold medal uh, was obtained. They only give six of those out a year to the best, some of the best professional illustrators in the world. And she won one of them as a student with us. She won another one just a couple of months ago. Um, after being out of the program. These were the two pieces that she had. This was uh, this piece was done for, um, I can't remember the exact name. It's a financial magazine. Um, a, a kind of uh, uh, a lot of the financial magazines are a little bit obscure to me. <laughs> That's not something I read, um, but uh, this was done for a very well-known art director, Sujin Vasili, uh, who um, is an art director of four financial magazines. And it was an art director she met from the program. So that said, the things that constitute a portfolio, the things that I think are the most valuable to be thinking about as a portfolio. And to start with, the portfolio represents you as an artist. It's what 
it's what people, how they um, remember you, how they, how they know you, it's um, how the industry looks at you. And I think that uh, I, I want a very famous art director uh, by the name of Mark Chiarella at DC Comics. Uh, for 23 years, he was with DC Comics. Uh, he's a very good artist too. Uh, Mark said at the beginning of a talk, which really made me, th and it kind of altered the way I approached uh, portfolio development for students. I listened to him talk at Spectrum and he started the talk was, he was, he was almost like an angry comedian, um, but, but it was very serious. He was like, you know, the comic world moves fast. I don't, you know, I, I, I know the industry. I look at what goes on in the industry, but people chase me constantly uh, to, to hire them as artists. And he said, if you, if you convince me by through an email or a direct mail piece or a portfolio review, whatever, to go to your website and look at your work, he said, don't make me read about you. He goes, I don't want to know about you. I don't know. I don't want to look at your social media and see what you had for breakfast. He said, I want to see the artwork that you can make for my needs. And I thought that, man, that is so good. I mean, and it's, and it, again, comic world is fast. It does move fast. And I know he's stressed with production. But I think that people don't think what really think how a portfolio functions in the industry. Um, on the illustration side, and please, Lake, Vivian, and John, a rebuttal or add to what, what you think about how effective it is on the concept side. I know the paths are very different, but on the illustration side, um, basically a portfolio is a job interview. It's, it is the thing that an art director is going to assess what you do. And so like any job interview, do your due diligence. Um, research who you're making this for. Before you make a portfolio piece, you need to know what the function is and who you're making it for. Um, and, uh, and again, on, on, the, on, a, on the illustration side, art directors run our industry. They rule the freelance artist world. They are the ones that holds the key, keys to the kingdom. And so you better identify who they are and what they're looking for. So identifying them, identifying the audience. You got, I, I, I remember following art directors like I was following a sports team. You know, I paid attention to who they hired. I paid attention to what, what stories they worked on. Um, I, I wanted to know what, how I could be a benefit to them. And I think artists generally <laughs> suck at that. <laughs> they, they don't do a good job uh, as they're, especially when they're starting out, they, they make pieces that they're just, you know, they're learning skill, they're learning, they want to learn lots of different directions. They, and, and they don't organize themselves very well. Uh, they don't organize what is going to serve me the best and give me the best opportunity to, to work in the industry. And it starts with understanding the industry. Um, you have to put, um, you know, you got to develop skill and craft, all the push-ups and sit-ups we do to be better artists. Um, there's all kinds of technical things you have to know, more so from the other side than probably the side that, that I live on. Um, and I think it kind of requires that you commit to a direction um, and you get focused in one direction. I think it's easier. Um, we have uh, a concept program that we have to re reorganized a little bit recently. And maybe Lake and John, Vivian, talk about that a little bit. Um, the, the, the idea of starting with one skill set and that being uh, character design. Can you talk about the value of that? Um, who wants to go first, I guess? There's three I'd love to have John field it because John's is the first yeah. class in the setup. Yep. It, it's definitely an interesting question because I feel like character design is the most like popular thing. And like everyone wants to design characters. And so there's a big, not only is there a big desire to design characters, but a also there's a big market value for characters. So there's like artist and industry overlap, but I think the 
the main thing that I try to cover with our character design class is it doesn't really matter if you're designing a character. It's more of just a design class. Like, do you, do you understand the story that you're trying to convey with the shapes or the motifs or the like bits and pieces that you're putting on your character in order to make this character be successful in the context that it needs to exist in. So for me, it's, I, I, I don't know. We like we have we, we've rebranded our our early classes to be more character focused, but I feel like overall it's still really just design focused and you can apply good design to anything that you really want to. John, John I'm going to interrupt because I, I I there's something you do in that class that I've gone back and watched a couple of times and yeah. you bring abstract design theory to the character and and you also do you also create i mean there's a pipeline to it mm -hmm. and from an outsider looking in um of of the process that you teach it seems like you know whether it be character it seems like character and creature and environments especially character and creature are really asso are, are, are associated in pipeline and maybe i'm totally wrong but it seems like switching to animal anatomy and um with a different mindset of what a creature needs to be moving and functioning that a lot of the similarities of learning that skill set would transfer to the next skill set pretty easily and I can field this a little bit. Um, the, Thank you. <laughs> the, yeah, there are very distinct te technical skills in between them, but the design theory stays very similar. Um, one of the reasons that character design has become larger as an industry over the last 10 years, because it wasn't big before. It used to be that the highly desirous positions were all in environment art. Um, but as the game engine technology has gotten better at procedurally creating environments and as design for environments becomes less technically demanding, skins and cosmetics, which are the real money movers, require a lot more design work to actually get them off the ground. So now we've seen a significant flip in the industry from environment design being the highly desirous thing to character design being the highly desirous thing because that's what people will pay money for. I'd like to also add to that um, characters are also extremely flexible. Um, it's not only it's in games or um, print media, it's also into like figures. Like there's a lot of figurine design. There's a lot of like collectible designs. There's a lot of toys. Um, it also bleeds into like TV and film. And technically it is in every single inch of entertainment or things that you're seeing in the world. So um, it's a very, Broad. I would say that it would, it's a very broad um, subject matter. And mm -hmm. it's also bleeding into illustration as well, because sometimes you are having to illustrate a character, but at the same time, you're creating that character as well. So you're not actually giving a design to work off of. So being able to do concept design, especially in characters, you can also you know, support your illustration side. So there's a lot of people that are kind of crossing both in industries nowadays. Um, so I think like that's why the characters are becoming very valuable and what lake was saying is also very true that we used to be at least in the western world it is very much a vehicle and environment focused industry um and also i think because of the idea of like now we have internet we have a lot of freelancing we have a lot of independent artists and art houses um there's no longer that bar between the east and the west world so that there's a lot of ips in the eastern side of the world um, that focuses a lot more on characters are able to you know pick up artists that are say in the western world as well so it's the world is different <laughs> yeah john, john john the other uh thing that I, um, I i i literally have watched six or seven times and you do a little thumbnail demo and the and i can tell you i've watched it so many times it's the the video the uh demonstration is 20 minutes and 50 seconds long <laughs> in 20 minutes and 50 seconds John design or, or, or does nine thumbnails. 
and then he takes three of them to the next level. And this is all, it, it's, it's beautifully explained. He explains everything that he's doing. They watch it at real time. And it was connected to the assignment that he was asking, requesting the students to do. And so it was, uh, um, start here. This is what it's good. This is what I, ultimately you're going to learn how to do, but this is how I do it. This is how the industry does it. And this is what I want you to ascertain from this. It's act, absolutely impeccable. I, I, I share it more than you know, John. So um, uh, it's brilliant. Um, I'd love to chime in on one other aspect of this. Um, in, in you saying that portfolio is everything. In concept, it's slightly different. Um, I would probably say that portfolio is the thing, it's the absolute table stakes. If you don't have it, you don't have anything. But in order to be able to work as a concept artist and even to get the jobs as a concept artist, you have to have communication skills. Probably, uh, oh, okay. what, yeah. a quarter to a third of it is interpreting what other people are saying and figuring out what their goals are and how to express them. Right. I, 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 that, I think that's true, um, f especially for repeat business on the illustration side. <laughs> um, I, all of the art directors that we've had come through our program on the illustration side and some um, on, on the concept side, um, the art, art directors, they, they, they've always said this, and, and I have not chased them or I have not tried to get them to say this, but somewhere the word trust comes up and especially for a freelance artist um the art director has to have faith and has to have trust that this artist is going to be timely they're going to put everything into it and they're going to get what they what they're looking for and trust is a huge factor and again everybody you know being responsible showing up doing your work i mean that's there's a lot of people that want your spot um there, it's a competitive industry um, my, the other, a couple of other things that I'll, you know, as I'm thinking of them, I'll, 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 we'll roll off my tongue here, but the, uh, the idea, I, I don't even know what talent is. I, I, and the more I think about talent, I think maybe it might relate to intelligence or curiosity. Um, but I think there's a, there's a term that I, I use a lot and that is want outruns talent in this industry. And I really believe it's true. Um, I think that if somebody wants to do this real badly and puts the effort into it, they can, they'll figure it out. They'll get through the obstacles. So mm -hmm. I got a whole bunch of other slides here and I thank you guys for chiming, keep chiming in, keep, keep pressing me, keep telling me where it's different and where, or if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, um, but I, th I also think at the beginning, and one of the reasons we did go back and focus on character is like, I really think if you focus on one thing, this is, this is, I, I know it works on the illustration side. If you get really good at one part of the industry, you're ready to go to work. Um, anybody that, that was around my father and he, he was a fairly serious guy, but he would get, People would ask him questions. He would always come up with really kind of simple answers to it. Um, and one of the one of the things, you know, Mark, what's the what's the best way for me to get started in the industry? How, what what do you suggest I do? And he he'd say, well, the best way is the fastest way, and and whatever it takes to get there the fastest. And and I thought, you know, he was joking for a long time. The, it's so true, um, because what happens. The people chasing as artists is life gets in the way and we'll talk more about that but uh, um but if you're focused and you do one thing well you're hireable and me i could only do one thing when i started as an illustrator i could paint heads um i and i got i started getting work of doing portraits of celebrities of, of doing famous people for the editorial world I wasn't even that good at it, <laughs> but I understood how the industry worked. And I knew that I had a, a, a body of, of professional pieces. It was very limited to what I, did, what I could do when I started. People started seeing that and then the world started opening up to me. They would ask like, well, I need, 
I need some portraits for this annual report, but these other pieces that go with it, and, and can you handle it? Yeah, no problem, I can do it. I had no idea how to do it. And you, you figure it out along the way, but starting with one thing that I was competent with allowed me to get started in the industry. And the other thing I'll say about that is most of the illustrators I know, um, successful, been working for a long time, I could ask any one of them, when did you start making a living as an artist? And it's like a day of reckoning for them. It was like, oh, I could, I didn't have to go and work at Lowe's anymore. I didn't have to, you know, I wasn't a barista anymore. I could just make art full time. That's your objective. And that is what a portfolio would do for you. If you think about it pro properly, it all comes back to what your capabilities are and what, what, what you can just let. And, and again, I think in my world, it's the art directors. Um, you might, again, if I say that on the concept side, would you, would you say how, how much does that hold up? Um, as full-time hire, I know there's, there's art tests, there's all kinds of things that you do. Maybe you, you could all talk about that just for, for a minute or two. Like do first day in the industry? Well, no, but, but like, who are you pursuing in, in the industry? Who are you trying to, you know, who's going to hire you? That depends, right? That, so there's two type, nowadays there's two type of classic artists. There's the full freelance and then there's the in-house. So the people you're pursuing is actually quite different uh, depending on which side of that you want to be in. If you're going to do full freelance, you're going to be dealing with people that are concept supervisor, which is also like a mini art director type uh, type of people. I know when you're doing the in-house, it's more like the entire team as well, the art director. So, but I think the general like requirement of getting to that point is pretty much similar. It's just that when you're chasing either side, the main thing you have to consider is like the IP that you're chasing. A lot of times the IP determines, you know, what kind of um, stylistic requirements or content requirements that you might want to focus on, on the portfolio. The alternate route I would propose is um, chase artists who are already working in the industry. Word of mouth is That's huge true. in concept art. And one of the main ways that I've seen people get work is when somebody gets offered a job that they, they don't want or can't take on because they have too much work, they will pass it to other people. Mm -hmm. So if you know a like senior concept artist somewhere and they get offered a thing that they don't want to take and they're like oh this junior person will be perfect for it that's a way i've seen very successful for a lot of people yeah and i don't want to add to that as well um like when you're chasing the existing artists not only can you see what kind of work they're working right now you know for that ip you can also establish kind of a relationship whereas let's pretend that you're not quite there yet but they would have acknowledged that you exist and therefore, as you grow and get better, you're always kind of remembered, so to speak, so that if there is an opportunity opening up, you know, they could think, oh, I met this one person with this one time and that art could possibly fit or let's see, you know, what they're doing and so forth. And they could realize that you have grown and now you actually fit within that IP or that style. Or when they change companies, they always remember that you exist. So I think just being able to be noticed <laughs> Notice me, senpai. Uh, <laughs> just being noticed is always a very, very good thing because you just don't know where people are going to be in you know, three, five years and don't know what kind of ID will be available. Now, this is where the communication skills side of things that I was talking about comes into play because um, the benefit of knowing a senior artist who's going to feed you work is that they also know you already have those communication skills. So they can tell the art directors that are offering them work Hey, they got chops and also they can think. Yeah. So how, how I, valuable, how bad, I'm going to ask John this question uh, because I've asked it to him before. <laughs> um, uh, uh, John, um, how valuable like have relationships been to you? I know, uh, I know a lot of the people you went to school with uh, it, it, um, because both Vivian and John went to school in one of my programs. Um, and which I'm really, really proud. Uh, but I, I, um, I know that I've had so many, so many artists, but more concept artists say it than illustrators is the relationships and the, and the networking they've done along the way has been just so crucial to them. 
because yeah. of that communication skill side of things. Yeah. Well, I think there's a there's a very fundamental uh, like industry difference because within if you're a professional illustrator you are always at the end of the pipeline. Like someone is giving you an assignment and you are making something to fulfill that assignment. If you're working in a concept type position, you're always working with other people. So whether or not like your relationships lead you to acquire jobs, you will always have to have strong soft skills because you are working with a lot of other people to make a product that is uh not successful but meeting the goals that it was intended to meet so uh i think if you're an illustrator you can somewhat be a little bit more just like in your own world, like doing your thing, painting pretty pictures and uh, making them like, it's like, oh, I painted the thing and it looks pretty and I did it, I'm done. But uh, in any kind of concept position, you're always gonna be more collaborating with other, not only other artists, but also producers and directors and money people. And I'll like, there's gonna be a lot of, input on your on your your work and your ideas and is it worth the time that it takes to like draw out this idea so uh, I think soft skills are definitely more important in concept than they are in illustration yeah they're, they're, illustr they're, on the illustration side you just have to show you can be responsible and all of your thinking is through the process you know, mm -hmm. and they can see that you can think. And if you're responsible, you're timely and you produce, you know, that's what they really care about. And, and now if you're, you know, you, you have a, some charisma about you, um, you, you know, see people at events, that type of thing, that goes a long way too. But, you know, art directors, they're friends with artists, but they're not, I'm friends with art directors that I've never worked for. Um, mm -hmm. and, and art directors, they have the budget, they choose the best people that they feel are the best people for the job. I am on my side of the industry. I, I really feel like it's a very honest, honest business and an honest industry that, you know, so is that a dog? That's my dog. He's being <laughs> uh, I, my, my, mine's not here. Usually it's um, the, um, um, but art directors, uh, you know, they're not going to hire, those relationships were built on a, a solid foundation of working. Um, I don't think that an art director would ever hire like an acquaintance just because they're an acquaintance. Um, they hire them, you know, their jobs depend on success and being successful, it, depend, it goes right back to who you hire. Um, I'm going to go to the next slide here. I have plenty to say about, I could keep talking about this stuff, but there's more there's more here I want to talk about. John, I was just going to ask you, uh, do you want to hold on the Q&A until the end or do you want to uh, start picking at those uh, throughout the event? Um, let's get let's get through these yeah. few things and then we'll Sounds jump great. in. Uh, okay. okay, well, you know where to find it. <laughs> okay, I've been, I've, I've been seeing a few, I've been looking at a few of them. Um, I have this, this conversation a lot with people for portfolio reviews. And I think you have to look at your life too and say, what type of an artist do I want to be? And a lot of people have, they have limitations or they have, um, they have things that have, they value that they want to maintain. And you have to think about how that is going to affect you in what part of the industry that's going to affect you. What, what's it going to do to that? So perfect example, we were talking about full-time and freelance. Um, Maybe location has a huge issue for you. If you live, you know, a long way, say you want to be a full-time, you want to be a full-time hire in a, in, a, in a game studio and you, where you live has no game studios. So you're going to have to relocate. Uh, visas could have a lot to do with that. Um, as a, as a, a, a freelance artist, it doesn't matter where you live. 
I, I truly believe that. I see illustrators that get, and past students of ours that live all over the world that get hired, that started working in the New York publishing world uh, as, edit, as editorial and book artists. And uh, because they identified that part of the industry and they, and, and they learned enough about the industry to know who to approach. Um, <laughs> I always think I've seen more artists fail of not taking care of the rest of their life. Um, this is, I consider it a privilege to do what I do. I, I, get to, I get to do what I wanna do most of the time outside of the school. <laughs> um, it, it has parameters, but as an artist, I was I pretty, pretty much go my own way and uh, get, to, get to drive the, the, all the decision-making. Um, I, at some point, you know, I had to deal with finance. I had to deal with my relationships with people, my, especially when, when I, I got married when I was about 30 years old. Um, it was an ultimatum. Um, and I can honestly say that I probably wasn't ready before then because I was pretty focused on what I was doing. And um, she was very tolerant to it. It worked well, but, you know, family, family, all of those things that happen in everybody's lives. And I see people fail by not taking care of some of the really obvious stuff. Um, they don't, they fail because they have to work full time to, because they have huge student loan. Uh, they, have to, they fail because they, um, they want to have a mortgage or whatever, whatever it is, the, the commitments they make financially. So learning how to deal with everything is very, very important to career. Um, any, any thoughts about any of that? Uh, I think the most interesting right. thing from your, the three of yours perspective might be like full-time hire and, and the, I, you probably know people that I, I, I students all the time that finish school, they're like connecting with me saying, I got to get a job right now, or I'm going to lose my, um, student visa. I'm going to have to go back home to wherever, you know, wherever I came from, but I really want to be here. That's stuff you got to think about. And that will help you determine can you be full-time or you be freelance and you got to make that decision. So speak up. I have a more macro thought attached to that idea. Um, I think you always have to consider your current situation and like what your goals are. And if you have short-term goals that you're wanting to meet, that's always a good thing to do. Um, but I think especially in our modern climate where social media is promoting a lot of like there's artists that are very successful because they're good at social media and a lot of people think that oh that's the measure of success uh, a lot of people a lot of artists pursue the same type of art and I think that's a, a risky thing because I don't necessarily believe in talent. I believe in like interest, like the thing that you're intrinsically drawn to is your talent. And I think, I think everyone has that. And if you pursue what you're really, really drawn to, you'll find your space as an artist. But if you try to pursue what you think will make you successful as an artist, whether that's on social media or I feel, or you're you're just starting to get into designing uh, concept design, and you're like, uh, all the companies want characters, so I'm just going to design characters, even though what I'm really interested in is creatures and like animal anatomy and evolution and all the cool shit that happens with Would, would you animals. say this is true, John? Or, or John, Lake or Vivian? Would you say this is true? I, I really believe, one of the first thing I say in a portfolio review is you gotta choose what you love. Um, you're gonna be competing with people that love doing what they do. And that's one mm -hmm. of the huge, that's one of the biggest benefits of, of in my life of being, being an artist. I get to do what I really love to do. Um, I don't think I would work as hard at doing something 
that I didn't want to do. <laughs> that wasn't my first choice. I would always be thinking, man, I'd rather be doing that. And just remember, you're competing with people that I, I, I use this line a lot that would walk through fire to get good at this because they just love it so much. And I, I jokingly say an artist, I use Chris Payne all the time because he's, I mean, the guy obviously loves what he does. I truly believe that if Chris never found a way to make a living at that, he would be still doing the same thing, maybe living in his parents' basement or something. Um, and, uh, but he, he's so passionate about what he does. And, and I think that that passion, if you're good at it, if you're good at that part of whatever it is, there's a place for it. And it's yeah. your job to find that place or make that place for it. I really want to build on that. Um, so as a person who has life things to take care of while trying to get into the industry. So as I was, I entered the industry, I entered, I guess like I entered the education for this industry a lot later than most people. I would say about 10 years older, <laughs> later than uh, most people. I was in classes with 18 year olds, fresh graduates from high school. And as John was saying, it's a highly competitive space. Um, and I knew I want to start a family. I wanted all these things that, you know, people are adults, the adult life <laughs> would contain. And for me, you know, it was, and I think a lot of people, and I think there's a huge reason why there's not as many women concept artists is that there is that life expectation of, you know, start, starting a family, raising children and so forth, where they're kind of forced to, I guess, step away from the art scene or from the concept art scene. Um, and you know, that's that's a life thing that you have to take a you know you have to pick between like committing your life to creating this creating arts versus the life things that you have to take care of and those aren't things that you can just say whatever to. Um, and I think like what's really important is that finding finding out your passion or the area you're passionate about, just like what John and John and John was saying, um, and finding that the priority for you, like what is the most important thing, like how badly do you want it so to speak and your passion will help you define a path or a goal like a direction to travel um and i think a lot of people they try very hard to get into the industry but they don't quite know where they're going it's almost like you're trying to hike a mountain but you don't actually know like which mountain and you know what direction you're going so you might spend a lot of times you know practicing on your own but you're not really making the progress that you would have if you knew where you were going to go ultimately. So I think like everything kind of works together. They're all connected. So it's really important to know where you want to go, what your passions are, and what's your priority. Because those, I think, are the very important things. And that's probably what happens to people and why they kind of fail to make it, so to speak. I think that's also a great point as to being a career artist, because there's a very big difference between I want to be the best artist who has ever existed on the planet, and I want to be someone who makes art and can pay my rent and support my family. Yeah. And one of my favorite, favorite ever sayings, um, I forget who said it, but uh, it was that there's a lot of room in the middle that you don't have to be the absolute best. There's a lot of opportunity, especially now. And you, you can find your spot in the middle. And if your goal is to be the best artist who has ever lived and you have the time and resources to, resources to do that, like by all means, go ahead, do that. Like, that's Filippo. awesome. Yeah. But <laughs> if you have like other obligations in your life, as most people do, then don't consider it a failure to be a mid-level artist who is living a happy life. Like ultimately it's more important. It's, it's most important to like, my job is something that I enjoy doing from nine to five, whatever that may be. And that pays my bills and I'm, I'm happy and fulfilled. And then I have time to do the other things I want to do outside of that. So I don't know. I think that's a, that, that's a weird mentality that has been instilled. It's kind of ingrained into the art community that like you always have to strive to be the, be the best. Hey, hey John, I have a I have a a reason 
or, or like an observation, I think how that has been built and how that uh, that mindset has been yeah. put in place. And that is um, our our world, the illustration world used to be a lot smaller. And and so there was just a small pe- group of people that you saw. They were the studio, you know, again, there were studio, there, there used to be a whole studio system under the freelance system. Um, but the the iconic stuff that I saw in my life and the generation before me of magazine illustrators, the stuff that I grew up looking at, it was just a small, a very small group. And they were all <laughs> kind of those giants. You know, they were, those were the ones you saw, those are the ones you gravitated to. And we all get those award books and you go through and you look at the pages and drool over them. It's like, oh, if I could only be, you know, one of my favorite things I ever had a student say, uh, my dad had just spoken and uh, at the Kansas City Art Institute where I was teaching and I walked into class and I had a bunch of my originals up and the student was looking at my work and he was telling the class as he's looking at my work, not knowing I was in the room, he said, man, he goes, I can't ever imagine being as good as Mark, but man, if I could just be as good as John, I'd be okay. <laughs> and it was like, I then, you know, you, then you interpret that and you say, there's all kinds of variations, even on the freelance level now of, and that mindset, I think that is maybe more of a contemporary mindset of, hey, let's enjoy ourselves a little bit more. Let's experience things a little bit more. Um, I think it's very healthy. And I actually think it makes you a better artist because I spent the first 10 years of chasing this where it's like, I just got to be the best I can possibly be. I mean, I can just, I just got to be, I, and, and it's kind of like in, in you starting as a freelance artist and you want to get work in the best publications, there's a little bit of, I mean, there, it's competitive. I mean, and a lot of the people I know that do that are, they have that mindset that you're talking about, John. Um, it's like, I'm going to run you over if uh, it, it, you don't get in my way. You know, I'm going to show yeah. I'm better than you. Um, that doesn't have to be there. You know, it, does, it, it you know, there's so well, many good, good people in this industry. Do you want to, I do want to also mention like for, there is a difference however between like illustration and concept. For concept design, you don't have to be the best renderer or painter. It's the idea behind the design, the, your, your ability to solve the design problem that is more important than the rendering skills or how well you can paint. A lot of time it's just having a solid foundation in order to just communicate your idea would be just enough. So. That's the difference. And I, I blame social, unfortunately, I blame social media for this, where people sometimes assume that you have to be a great illustrator at the same time as a great designer. And that's not exactly the case. You know, there's a lot of people who are just wonderful designers in the industry that's been there for, you know, decades. And when they paint, it's not always the best thing. You know, it's just the idea behind it is so strong and it is so powerful. Um, yeah. that makes them great yeah but the, the, and that amazes me too it's like when I, I show off all of your work I'm showing mm-hmm. off John John's work and I'm looking at like this guy's a great picture maker <laughs> you know it's like you know that comes from an illustrative understanding the picture you know uh, mm-hmm. the picture Absolutely. playing understanding making uh, great compositions but then I look at all the, you know, I'll go and li- listen to the, you know, his little demo. And it's like, I feel like a total dummy listening to that stuff. Um, it's like, how did he put all this stuff together? It's amazing. It amazes me. Um, the thing I say to the students that come through my class is, um, and this is speaking from my own experience, uh, you don't have to pull 15 hour days of study to be able to compete in the industry, but you have to realize that you're competing with people that did. Yeah, that's, that's well said, Luke. And you know, I, I got a kick out of a group of us sitting around at dinner one night at the Illustration Academy, and we, we were laughing about um, all-nighters, and kind of went around the table, and, and, I, and I think it was George Pratt that leaned over and goes, Gary, you haven't said anything. I mean, how many, I mean, how many times did you have to do that? And he just looked at us, and he said, never. <laughs> I was like, of course, it's Gary Kelly. <laughs> um, he was very methodical, you know, he worked to, you know, work from eight, eight in the morning till seven o'clock every evening. He said, I gave up a lot of things in my life. He said, but I'd never, I never felt like I had to stay up all night. Um, I know a lot of illustrators that have. 
And I always felt like, and, and it, I don't know if it made things any better. So um, one more thing, I, before I go to the next slide, I'm gonna talk about the social media. And I think it's really important. Um, I tell the illustrators, if you're working on your, as you're building, you work on your social media, start with the resource books. Lake said this earlier, start with the people that are making the art in the industry. Um, I go to ArtStation. I don't know how many of those, I think there's a lot of people, uh, emerging artists on ArtStation that are trying to figure out how to work in the industry. Uh, social media is rampant with that. You know, people that are, and, and there's no, there's no way to track that or control that from, from my, from my point of view. I know people, I have students that have hundreds of thousands of followers, doesn't do them anything, doesn't do them any good because they don't have the facility to work in the industry. Um, start, and then you can build, you know, there's this great trick that, that Dale Stefanos, you know, says, if you're following an artist that you really love and they're getting, they're producing a lot of work, notice that most illustrators, you know, freelancers that are working in the editorial and print world, uh, the uh, uh, book publication world, he said, publishing world, he said, don't, don't just look at their work, look at who they're tagging, it's, it's become common practice that when your illustration gets printed and it comes out that you'll thank the art director and tag them. And so think of all the, think of all the connections you can make just by following who they're working for, which is a big part of, of, of portfolio development and chase I'll get into in just a few minutes. But um, any thoughts on the, what, that, that topic between the three of you? Whenever I hear somebody talk about people that are successful on social media, like if you want to be big on Patreon or big on Instagram or something like that, you've essentially just told me you want to move to LA and be a movie star. It's like that that's your snowball's chance in a hot place. <laughs> You're, it's just not going to happen for you. Sorry. Like for the 0.001% that may get discovered, maybe it'll happen but right. it's not a viable career goal. And, and you can't use James Sheen as a, an example. Right. Because he, he was already established. He was already established. He was a really good industry artist. Um, yeah, Lake, think, Lake, I'll echo what you said because I've worked a lot with digital agencies that specialize in social content. And it's, it, you know, seven years ago, I think that that was to organically, you know, to be good, to put out good content equaled good, like followship you know, but it just doesn't anymore. And the amount of content that you have to put out today, and I'm not um, being like hyperbolic, the amount of content is like a minimum of like three posts. You have to like leverage the newest uh, medias that each platform is promoting. So it's like if Instagram creates a new feature on stories, like you better adopt it if you want to get featured more. And it's just, uh, it's it's going to replace your primary goal, which should be to get better at illustration, to get better at, what, at your work. And not it's worth going the to chase. Be, it's not worth the chase. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, yeah. I think it, I think it's not necessarily that it's not worth the chase, but that's two completely different careers mm. because there's being an artist as an entertainer, which, like, if you look at someone like Ross Draws, who I think Ross Straws is a really competent, successful, well-rounded artist. He does beautiful paintings and a lot of the paintings he posts, I'm like, damn, I wish I had, I, I wish I could paint something that beautiful. But Ross Straws business model is being an entertainer. He makes videos that people enjoy watching. He makes tutorials that people will pay for and uh, it's people are paying for his entertainment or his education to fund his livelihood, not his art itself, which is not a bad thing, but that's a different career from being someone who, like me, like I make my art and no one knows that it exists, but I get paid to do it and my rent is paid and I can buy food and that's great. 
John, so. you said something really wonderful just a second ago and kind of blew past it. You said Ross makes tutorials that people will buy. Tutorials that are useful and tutorials that people will buy are also two very different things. They are. Yeah. And social media is, I think, is really good to give you a little bit, just a little bit of boost in exposure to the people who are doing the hiring. But it does not necessarily demonstrate your actual skill set your capability doing the work and your soft skills. Because yeah. I think when you're entertain when you're um, interacting with like a screen or like your little Twitter box, it's not exactly the same as when you're actually taking the feedback or having a constructive conversation regarding a piece. Well, and that's the great thing about art as a medium is if you apply to a job and submit your portfolio, everything you have to offer is right there on the table because you've drawn it and it's there on the page and they can see the steps that you took to get there. And you just can't, you can't hide anything. Like it's all right there if you're going to apply to a position in the art industry. So. What well, being yeah. an artist, one of the things that, uh, uh, became obvious for me when I first started it and somebody said it out loud and I always remembered this was uh, being an artist is a lot like show and tell um, you always got to even if you don't want to you always got to show what you do <laughs> you know you don't have to show everything but whatever you're being hired to do it's it's out there it's out there on the table and um, you got to get comfortable with that the other thing that connects with that and I say this all the time is that even a successful artist fails more than they succeed and so uh and i think that's that's healthy um but you got you got to learn to live with that you got to learn to wrap your mind around that it's like you're handling rejection um things can be rejected because it's just you know a re, you know something from somebody else that you know from a client or whatever that it, you know it doesn't make any rhyme or reason um but you can't you can't you know, you, well, you, let's put it this way. You got to learn to defend yourself when you have to, but you can't defend everything. Um, choose your battles wise, wisely. Um, I'm going to get moving here. We got things we need to keep, keep going here. I'm going to keep us on track and, um, you know, making it easy for the art director. Every art director that we've, I've ever interviewed, I've asked this question. How and when do you align a project with an artist and inevitably the first thing they do is they're like they get defensive and they say i pay a, a lot of attention to the industry i look at all the resource books i you know people send me emails i get newsletters i get direct mail i i know what's going on it's like okay but how does that happen and they said well when when i think about it when i really what i my my actual process is why i'm reading the brief or why i'm reading the um, the article, I'm, I can't help but think about the artists that are in the back of my head. <laughs> I can't help but think about who I know that would do this the best. This may be very different on the concept side, but it is. I, um, I, can, I can offer some insight. I can there. see it in your face, Lake. <laughs> um, um, but I think there's a lot of that, um, that they, they go with what they know. They go with, and again, um, which ultimately means on the illustration side, I know it's very effective this way, is they're doing that from memory. And so your goal really is to become memorable to those art directors. What does that mean to become memorable? Well, first of all, to be memorable, you can't, you can't show, nobody can remember you for doing multiple things, lots of things. And from an art director's perspective, they care about what they're looking for. So identify what that function is you're going to focus on. And it's got, so your portfolio has to have two major things. It's got to show function and it's got to look like you made it. Meaning there's got to be a voice or a consistency to the work, um, whatever you want to call it. Some people call it style. I don't like that. Um, I think it's too general. I don't think it's, I think it's more how somebody thinks and designs and there's a voice to that individual. And that those two things paired together will make you memorable uh, to the art directors. Lake, I'm going to let you 
uh, rebut what I'm saying for the concept side. Yep. Uh, there's two two things I want to talk about, um, and Vivian and John can either back me up or tell me I'm completely wrong here. Uh, it used to be true that there were different ways of displaying a portfolio online. Now, because of its ubiquity and their search engine optimization and their organization tools, just use ArtStation. Like there, it used to be fine to have your own website and and, and other ways of reaching you. These days, just use ArtStation. Um, when I yeah. am hiring because I'm art directing a project, I go through my ArtStation follows. I've, and I've, I'll talk about pieces in a second, but Vivian and John, uh, would you agree about the art station note? 110%. I yep. am a senior outsource supervisor, so I also do hiring and almost 100% of the time, we're just okay, going to art station Vivian, funny things. Yes. Vivian, expand on that a little bit. Where, are you, where do you work right now? Um, I'm working for Blizzard on Diablo 4. It's super, oh. super fun. And we have a lot of outsourcing work. And just like Lake was saying, 100% of the time, all we're looking at is art station and finding people that would fit within the visual direction that we're working with. So it's literally like we don't go to people's websites. It's just art station. If it's, you're not there, we're not like digging to look for you. I will occasionally, if we need to branch, okay, so I work for Wizards uh, doing franchise development, and occasionally, if we need to branch into different styles, I'll find myself like on Twitter or something, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm not actually on Twitter, and one of the worst things you can possibly do is have Twitter be the only place you can find your work and also be the only place you can be reached. If I can't email you on Twitter, I'm not going to reach out. Like, I, I'm not going to direct message you, I'm not going to log into Twitter just to message you. If you have your work on Twitter, you have to show your email address or I'm not going to hire you. John, any thoughts on that? First of all, John, where do you work? Do you have a job? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just here. I'm just here with my dog. He's he's whining about things. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, I am a 2D art lead, technically, at High res Studios working over Splash and UI. And I would definitely echo that if you're trying to apply to work for my company, I want to see your art station portfolio. Not just because, I mean, mainly because it's 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 just it's just the standard. Like if you send me an art station link, I know how to navigate your portfolio, and with concept and illustration it's really just about seeing the work it's not so much about like can you design a website that's fancy and appealing so it's uh, i think art station is definitely the standard for entertainment art specifically yeah and I will, you go first. specifically for, for <laughs> film and digital games it's yeah it, and for some like traditional games, this is not a thing about editorial or anything like that. This is specifically our world. Mm -hmm. And I think one more thing that ArtStation offers that the others don't is that you can always, so maybe this is just me while I'm hiring. I like to see who they're following and what yeah. kind of pieces they 100%. like, because that shows a lot about your taste, your passion, and just the general, like it tells a lot about the person, like what kind of stuff you're into. And it's quite nice to see what people are into these days. I mean, sometimes it's surprising and sometimes it's very cohesive. Like it makes a lot of sense that the kind of artwork you're producing is because of that. And it's, it's very good to have that. What if, I there, think... if there's somebody in my follows who either isn't perfect for a job or they are perfect, but they're unavailable for some reason, the first place I go is who are they following? Yeah, me too. <laughs> Just it's really clear. yeah it's like a huge network it's ever it's almost some, sometimes you'll find that one person is connected to everybody else and then they branch out like a little tree and it's nice i think just, tim you had something to yeah, say i was right. just going to say to clear up any confusion because we've gotten a lot of questions in the chat art station this is really specific to what lake and john and vivian are talking about this is if you're focused on you know publishing editorial illustration which i know a lot of people in the audience are um that is that that is just it's just very that's a different uh a different, different aspect different industry different, yeah. if you're in editorial or publishing ignore everything we said <laughs> yeah yeah don't worry about it art station is you're at a different station not yep. art station <laughs> yep so okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna keep this moving we have a lot to talk about still um 
I think, can, I, I think, can I interrupt you? Before yeah, absolutely, you do? John. Sure. Um, I think uh, a great point that Vivian made about looking at what, like, who, the the things that your portfolio is in your likes. That was a terrible sentence. Uh, concept art is really about thinking more than it is drawing and painting. Like you have to be a competent drawer and painter to like fulfill your technical requirements as a concept artist. But if you're trying to get into the industry of concept art, it's much more about how you think than it is about how pretty you can make a thing. So there's a lot of really, really amazing illustrators that could not cut it in a lot of concept art positions because while they can render light and form and textures and materials with really beautiful brushwork and lighting and color, it's that's not what the concept art field is about. So it's just a very different industry. So um, not only does that tie into like, if an art director is gonna pull up your art station, are they gonna look at your, like the type of artwork that is in your likes and follows, but it's also what's in your portfolio itself. Um, a concept art director is not looking for a final product. They're looking for the thought process that you took to get to that point. And if you can prove to an art director, I have a concrete process of thinking from you gave me a brief and, a, and an idea and I turned that into something visual that is not only appealing, but also technically, uh, like technically usable, like this can be rigged, this can be animated, this can be converted into the engine that the product is using or the animation style or whatever. Um, concept art is just a very different industry. It's much more about thinking and problem solving rather than creating something that's very pretty to look at. John, so. I, you know, and in, in your, uh, all three of you, when you go to just looking at your art station pages, you know, you go- Mine to the, is not geared for concept art at all right now. <laughs> well, but when you, a lot of the artists that I, I look up on art station, that are working in your part of the industry that the process underneath it well after you click on the first slide they show a lot of process work that's very uncommon on the illustrate in the illustration world um it's just finished piece i i andy park uh, that was speaking in our program last year he's i think he's his head of um visual development for marvel studios uh kind of a good great kind of a good guy to know in the industry <laughs> guy's amazing and he's an amazing artist and he said the thing that he always looks for in a portfolio he goes i want to be wowed i want to be blown away with the piece but then as much as i'm blown away the piece i want to look and see if how they got there <laughs> um, he says how they got there may be important to, more important than the actual piece to me now, which i thought that was a really beautiful way to say it um uh so my, I'm going to leave this, this slide, the, the idea of, as an illustrator, I think in all portfolios, is to become memorable, to, to something that people are going to react to, in a way, you have to show, and, and again, it's like, there's a huge, there's so many big problems with entering the industry that, um, that you just have to deal, one of them is the technical facilitation, um, you know, on the illustration side, if you're going to if you're going to try to out facilitate and you're going to show a portfolio with great facilitation in it when you're starting out you may it may take a, you a very very long time because your your facilitation is going to look weak against you know John Foster or Donato Giancola um, or Tyler Jacobson you know they 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 have really high end facilitation and it's going to take a long time. So I always tell students, it's like, focus on the, focus on you, that, you know, your facilitation has to be good enough to explain 
your your point of view and your voice and show great problem solving. Um, I think that's that's more effective getting started. Plus, plus it it puts more emphasis on the individual. I'm going to go to the next slide. We have a lot to talk about still, and I want to keep moving. This was a, a sheet, and I'm just going to sum it up real quickly that I put in there that Edward Kinsella wrote, and I always talk about it in my portfolio class. I'm I'm As I'm screaming focus all the time, he said, don't forget about the range inside of that focus. You know, you can't like say the focus is, is a children's book. Well, children's book, you, to show a children's book, you need to show generally you show, show that you don't have to show that standard children's book is 17 images, a cover and 16 interior. You don't have to show the whole thing to represent a book. You can show four or five pieces, but you need to show that you can do action before action, after action. Uh, you need to be able to show that you can repeat a character multiple times, that you can maintain the likeness. You need to show that you understand the difference of uh of what a cover is supposed to do versus an interior piece. And generally establishing shots are very important. So showing different mechanisms inside your, that the range of just inside of that one focus is very, very important. Um, let me see, where, where are we here? Uh, this, this is a, actually an exercise we give to our portfolio students before they develop a portfolio. Not going to get into, I don't, not going to, I'll explain it along the way. Um, all of our, all of our classes that we, that we teach to help people better their portfolio, to better their skill set, pipeline, whatever it is, I think these three things have to be considered all the time. As you're developing as an artist, you've got to think about skill and craft. You know, how to uh, basic picture making principles, understanding abstract design, understanding the pipeline uh, process, um, the push ups and sit ups that you go through to get good, to practice your drawing, to practice using media, whatever it might be. And then you have to have a way to manufacture solutions, to manufacture ideas. And the, it, uh, to, to iterate, I watch, you know, I watched all three of these people do, do it at a very high level, very different than the way that I iterate. Um, but in a, that's a huge aspect of it. As John was just describing, the, 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 the concept artist might be more the way you think than the way you finish. I hope I said that, I pared that down gracefully. Um, and then all of that aimed at understanding the industry. It starts, you know, we talking about different platforms, different places to pursue, look for artists and stuff. You got to know the artists that are working in the industry now. <laughs> they've they've uh, they've solved a lot of problems for you. You 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 don't you got to learn about them. You got to learn artists from the past too. But you got to understand how the industry functions. Um, you, you know what your what your focus needs to be. Know what you're aiming for. Know know the path of how to get there. Understand the industry. If you don't if you don't understand one of these three things you're going to fail, just outright going to fail, unless you're just the luckiest person in the world. You have to address all of these things. So uh, on our illustration curriculum, we've just, and, and I organized this based on information that you need to go to work in the industry, uh, uh, to develop a portfolio, which goes, you know, everything comes back to portfolio in, on, on, in the illustration world. Um, you got to understand the process, the act of um, the act of making a picture with an art director. What you go through, the v, the three value thumbnail, the value study, final drawing, color study, um, and finish. You have to get approval along the way. You're not making a picture by yourself. You're making it with somebody else. Um, and in the illustration world, I know they were talking about committees and money people and all kinds of things that John was bringing up earlier. In the illustration world, as as uh, a working for editorial and publishing, it's and and in comics, it is the art director and an editor. Those are the only two people. Most illustrators never even meet the editor. They're only that's who the that who <laughs> that's who the art director is subserving it to, and they get approval from. But it's almost you and the art director all the way. So. Next, it's this ability to ideate, to visual storytell. 
uh, and create, uh, you know, you don't sit around and wait for an idea to come. You, you manufacture ideas, you chase ideas, you create, you create uh, opportunity. And then you pair these two skills together to make a portfolio. And then after, once you have the portfolio, you pursue it. And these are the three, these are the four level classes that we have. We offer short classes that, you know, are about push-ups and sit-ups that, that uh, make you better as an artist. We have figure drawing, we have head painting, we have um, uh, color, th color theory, we have a sequential class, we have a media class. We're just opened up uh, and built, building a 3D class that's going to be offered here in about five or six weeks. Um, these are our mentors. Uh, these people are stars. They, they are, I'm, I, just to be in the same room with them, I'm pleased. I mean, I, I enjoy everybody and they're great artists and they're, they're, they're really passionate about their teaching. They put a lot of effort and time into it. Um, this is Catherine Lamb who teaches process, skill, and craft. This is Audrey Benjaminson. You probably recognize this piece on the cover of Spectrum 26. This piece was done for Netflix on the one on the left. This is Dale Stefanos. This is a piece that I believe it was done for Rolling Stone. And this is a book cover that Sterling Hunley did. Ster, um, Dale teaches our, uh, our portfolio class. I am a, a contribute that, to that class quite a bit. Uh, the goal is to help you identify your audience, go through, go through the steps that we're talking about. And my job and Dale's job is to keep a very sharp, long pointed stick to keep you moving in the right direction and helping you, helping you with your finished pieces. John, I don't mean to interrupt, but I, I just wanted to say, you know, to, to comment is I think the reason that it's so important to talk about who these mentors are and who these artists are is that like visual arts passage, we very much buy into like the Star Wars concept of like, you need an Obi-Wan or a Yoda. <laughs> and so, and I feel like if you're talking about the concept art program or the illustration program, like it's, it's really critical and in line with portfolio development is you need that mentor. You need that, you need to find your Obi-Wan kind of situation. Well, that, you know, ideally when we developed this program, it was to con connect with a group of working artists that are doing what you want to do and that can help you that do it day in and day out that are some of the most sought after professionals in the industry to help you develop yourself. I learned that way. That's, that's how I think about education all the time. I, I had a different education because I grew up around a bunch of really successful artists. And I always kind of wondered how did somebody else do it that didn't have all the info? It was really hard for me. How did somebody else get there without that information? So the Illustration Academy at the beginning and Visual Arts Passage um, has always been about giving you that connection and giving you that information that's coming directly from stars in the industry. Um, this, this piece on the right is done by Sterling Hunley. Um, I presented Sterling Hunley's ninth gold medal to him at the Society of Illustrators last year. That's unbelievable. I mean, there's only a few people on the planet alive that have that many, and they're all 20 years older than he is. I mean, he is a rock star among rock stars. The guy's amazing. They're all great. Um, so on the concept side, these are, you know, the classes that are, are, we've been talking about pipeline already. Um, please step in. You can say whatever you want to say about this point, but these are, these are the, the these, this is right off of our website. These are the three that are teaching uh, this the, this semester that are here in the room, and then John Nymeister. I don't know, it, it, you know, it, you know. I don't know if you call yourself a concept artist or you call yourself an illustrator, concept artist slash illustrator. But he's a great picture maker. I mean, um, understands composition so well. Um, it, it, very personal with me with John. I met John when you were seventeen years old. Um, youngest person to ever come into our program at the, at the time. And to see what you're doing now is just, it floors me. And uh, I got to go to the- Just a wee person. Bobby. <laughs> <laughs>
have I, I have to go to the net I have to go to Vivian because I'm going to start crying if I talk if I talk too much about it um Vivian yes <laughs> uh, so this this is obviously done at high res but yes. um you're at blizzard now yes yeah and in contrast to John I met John English after I've already finished my bachelor's where I am actually I finished my master's I was in the process of switching industries so I wouldn't say like super old but you know like the opposite of a wee baby <laughs> um yeah and I'm one of those people that who had to also make a huge style change in terms of like my industry goals um because in high res is very much stylized and it's quite free in terms of like how high fantasy how high a high fantasy can go whereas in blizzard is my style has to be completely grounded and it's very different and it's more so driven by real life so it's i have the pleasure of working in two different environments and so forth yeah i'm gonna go, I'm gonna go on i'm gonna go on can I, I, can, I, I can brag about everybody go ahead john i know you have something <laughs> to say here i have a i have a small note on that uh, just in terms of like when you're considering your career goals with illustrators, genuinely, generally you'll be hired for your particular point of view and your particular way that you can paint or render or compose or design things. Um, in concept, that's somewhat true because concept directors are looking for the way that you think and the way that you can design things but they are also wanting you to compact that into i'm trying to make a product can you fit into that method of thinking so i think with illustration like personal style and uniqueness holds more weight and with concept design uh like technical skills and can you think in a unique way that also meshes well with my product is more important yeah and it also comes down to what you're passionate about like if you're i always say that if you're not passionate about the type of artwork that one a particular ip you're working on you may end up burning out a lot quicker than someone who is very excited about the ip or the style and so forth so if you're comfortable in the environment, your lifespan is as long as you want. <laughs> Which is why you should pursue what you love. Yes. But also broaden your horizons. <laughs> yeah. For fun and profit. The right, best way cool. I can put it is commit fully to one thing, but never be so sure of what you want that yes. you can take something better. Well said. Absolutely. All right. So Lake. Where do you work? I know. Where you work. <laughs> so I, I mentioned a second ago, I met Wizards of the Coast uh, on the franchise dev team, which means we're translating all of the game materials to like film, TV, uh, video games, all of that stuff. So I'm in this weird little nexus point in between all of the work that Wizards has been doing and all of the stuff that we're going to be doing in the future. Uh, I've worked for many years as a Magic and D&D illustrator, as well as freelance concept art as well as external development for concept art. Um, and this is easily the best job I've ever had. Yeah, it's, I am now doing the job that people tell you concept art is gonna be, but it probably isn't. <laughs> Interesting. Um, and I'm gonna explain a little bit about how our pro program functions and um, every, you know, we're a 10 week program a semester. These are the guest speakers for next semester. Uh, these are the, the illustration guest speakers, and these are the concept art speakers. I challenge you to look all of them up. They're all phenomenal. They're all fantastic, well-vetted industry individuals. And it's it, to learn the path of others and to be exposed to more, more artists, I think is so important. It's always been valuable in educating artists to me in our, in our programs. You, you know, to, to see how somebody else has done it. And somebody recently that's done it. Um, it's that's really, really important for for me to tell you how I got started in the industry. In concept, it's kind of the same, but it's so different. Um, the the world has changed. You know, I used to have to make phone calls and carry um, carry my originals up 
to the art directors in, in New York. And that's, you know, that would go to Grand Central Station and call art directors in, in a pay phone. And uh, didn't work that way anymore, <laughs> uh, thankfully. Um, that page, John, by the way, is a, such a good example of how networking actually functions because I met you through John Namaister a couple of years ago, but I already knew Chris Ron and Carla Ortiz through other means and our professional circles happen to like Venn diagram overlap like 80%, but we'd never met before. And so it, it took, you know, John saying, hey, you guys should say hello to kind of make that professional connection happen too. Cool. And it, and it, it um, the three of you have introduced me to people that become part of our program. And it's been extremely helpful. Um, so basically- the, the only thing I was gonna say about the guest speakers is just for anybody who's confused, these free events we host in a webinar room, these classes are extremely personable. And those meetings, you have video and audio abilities, you have the opportunity to ask questions. It's absolutely a relationship building opportunity for you and your mentor your peers in the class. Um, I just thought that was important to add. Yeah. Well, Timmy, I think, I think this is the last slide I'm going to show and then let's jump to the questions. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, and I, I kind of, I've have a bunch of other things I can show, but I think I want to get to your questions, but I just want to explain how our program works and why it works. Um, we have every, each one of these individuals here, um, every class that we have, we have a homeroom class, a live class, on uh, Saturday. That class is three hours long. That class has lecture, demonstration, and critique. Um, changes each week. Um, you'll get an assignment. And then in the middle of the week, you have study hall. Um, it's another three-hour event. It's in Wednesday, Wednesday evening. And there's always three to five artists in there, uh, usually closer to five. And the uh, it's your mentors from different classes. And so you can get point of view from, from the illustration side, from the concept side. Uh, many of our, my students that are wanting to do RPG games that are interested in doing, you know, they, they discover who Lake is. <laughs> they're, they're like, they have no interest in talking to me anymore. They're like, oh, I, Lake's the guy. I want to work for that guy. Uh, that's what I want to do. But th that's fantastic. You get another, you, you, get, you get to see what other people are doing in their classes. Um, it, we're, it, it, it's really good for the community. And there's just, you can learn so much from those critique sessions. I truly believe you start seeing and learning from the successes and failures of others, probably a little quicker than, do, than you do on your own work, because you get so personal and so close to your work, you can't see it. Um, fresh set of eyes is so important in this industry legibility does it solve the problem does it tell the story whatever it might be um if it's not reading to somebody else you already know the parameters and your own instructor knows the parameters i love when somebody from the outside just sees it for the first time and you say what does this mean and say lake does that to us in study hall all the time and you know i stumble around trying to figure out what what's going on um but that information if it's not doing that it's not functioning that happens in there a lot, and it's very helpful. And then the then the other contact we have is our daily. Our, you know, you can interact with your instructor on a daily basis in Discord, and it's amazing how much you go through those Discord channels, how much interaction there is, and that's what makes it work. So um, I'm gonna. I think I'll probably stop there, and let's just open it up for questions. Timmy, do you have any way you want to do this, or um, I, I would just went to, and opened up the Q and A. The, the only thing I was going to add is just that just a reminder that enrollment for these classes is happening right now. Uh, class starts next Saturday. Enrollment ends the 21st. Uh, I'm going to drop links in the chat to both programs as well as uh, we're going to give out a discount code to everybody who attended uh, today's lecture. Um, other than that, I, I think you've already got a, you've got some questions stacked up already that I think right. are great. So I would tackle those and then if we can add more to them. Let's go from there. Yeah. Um, can, can you all see the Q&A, Lake and John and Vivian? Um, you can probably just drop your screen, John, and we can just go from there. Drop the screen share. Yeah. Unless okay. you need it. Yeah. 
Actually, uh... While you're dropping that screen share, I will answer the first question. Do I have to click answer live before I do? Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll manage. <laughs> Saul asks, do my chances of getting hired increase if I focus on character design first? The answer is, if you like character design and want to do it for your job, then yes. Otherwise, I want to I want to add to that. And if you're targeting a company that actually have a character focused IP, because yes. if you went to somewhere that has a lot of environment and there's like two characters, probably not so. But if you're going to places where majority of the models and, and assets are characters, that's absolutely. I'll take on Jackie's question. Uh, is there a demand for 2D ink illustration? I draw a ton of animation, uh, uh, animals and scenes, children's book illustrate, absolutely, if you're good at it. Um, there's illustrators that I know that, pure, that work just in ink, in black and white. Um, some that add splashes of color, which is easy to do on top of the ink. Um, somebody like one of the most successful editorial illustrators in the, in the world right now is John Cunio. Um, just uses ink and, wa ink and watercolor. Um, there's, it doesn't, I don't think media matters that much. You know, it's, it's design. It's uh, if you're good doing good storytelling, a lot of illustrators in the traditional side have it was a, you talk about broadening your your um, your range. I always showed three or four black and white pieces in my portfolio. Um, I got lots and lots of black and white work for interior pieces. Um, a lot of times I would do a main like a full page with some black and whites that went along with it that still exists. Um, but I, I know people that work just in black and white. How do you make um, connections? Um, well, I think we talked about it quite a bit. It's like, look, look at the industry, look at, you know, follow artists that are working in the industry, follow who they're working for. Um, making connections to those people, you know, how you pursue that, I mean, that's a large part of what we teach in our portfolio class. Um, Sending direct mail, sending, learning how to uh, create a uh, uh, a newsletter, uh, an introductory email. Um, a lot of a lot of people try to you know a lot of comic comic artists try to meet people at events. Um, there's all kinds of different ways to put yourself in front of that are kind of standards to put on, yourself in front of people. On the entertainment side, do you do you all? <laughs> especially post pandemic, do you find opportunities to network in person ever? Or is it all online? Uh, post pandemic, I've had opportunities. I have in person painting things that I do with with people. It's limited. Mm -hmm. It depends on who you work with as well. Like some companies are 100% remote, some are hybrid, and some are still very much like in the office and so forth. I do think there's benefits benefits for both like the distance and also like in person, especially on the entertainment site. Um, like John was saying earlier about being able to work with people, like it's really nice to be able to talk to modelers or other departments to solve an issue as opposed to something waiting for people to respond to like a Slack chat or something like that. Do you, Join, oh, yeah. go ahead. I was just going to ask, do you point your students generally in the direction of, well, I mean, obviously getting to know each other and, you know, building relationships during the mentorship, but towards other things, like I would say like, like Lightbox or similar events? Yeah, I don't yeah. see why not. I mean, I think, I think interaction is just really important. And also, it I, I feel like in person interaction makes you a bit more memorable as well because you actually met this person and you gotta, you know, actually have a face to face, know each other session. <laughs> I do. I do have an important. Oh, go ahead, John. Uh, addition to that thought, um, I think a lot of the times when people talk about networking they're always approaching it from the standpoint of how do I connect with someone who is X level of skill or job above me? And that can be useful. There's definitely situations and opportunities where you can connect with someone who is more established, more well-known, more skilled, and you can get kind of into their circle. But I think a really really, 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 really important thing is to not neglect the connections you make with the people that are growing along with you. So your, your peers, like the people that you're 
in class with and the people that you're talking with on Twitter who are not super successful right now, but maybe at some point might be. And the that that's kind of a selfish way to phrase it, but it's it's not about like I want to connect with people who may someday be successful in the future. But when you're talking about ne- networking, it's really about establishing authentic relationships. Like most of the most of my career opportunities have happened because of people that I've known for a long time and we happened to be able to help each other at some point. It's not that I managed to kick my foot in the door of the industry and Ian McCaig gave me a great job. Like I love Ian McCaig. Ian McCaig doesn't know who the hell I am. <laughs> like all, all, all my career. All my career success has been from mostly from peers, some of whom I've known for like two decades or more. So uh, when you're thinking about networking, don't just think about like trying to connect with people who are quote unquote above you. Focus more on the people who are developing with you because that's who art directors look at are looking for and that's the people that can really really help you in the long run i'm gonna make- I add to oh. that just real quick no, go ahead. Um, and, and the reason why that's important and or why it works is because those are the people who knows how you work how hard you work and how diligent you are so a lot of times some people are they they want to go places but they're not quite working hard enough or they're not quite pleasant to work with so like when you have this kind of relationship with your peers or if you're even your mentors there is a pre-established I guess like knowledge of like how well you would take criticism how well do you apply those feedback how you know how invested you are and how passionate you are and those are the things that will absolutely give you I guess like it will benefit you if you're applying for a job versus somebody who maybe people don't really know how you work you know people don't know how you would take the feedback but if you were already I guess if you already pre-established a relationship with them as you know outside of that um, job getting <laughs> situation um, there's more I would say there's more trust in your ability to execute your job your task and I think that's why it's important and especially as peers it's easy for peers to see like how you got to that point I hope that was worded right I don't think I was worded very well but um but yeah like it definitely helps um, um and I I'm sorry and I just want to answer one question before it gets pushed up because it wasn't in the question and answer section if you want to be a 3d sculptor the best social media is still our station <laughs> because we still look at our station that's it <laughs> um a good question there how can an artist effectively demonstrate their ability to think Show me a combination of two elements that have never been combined in that way before in a way that could fit into an existing IP. And then on, on my side, you know, obviously fin- uh, on the illustration side, your finished work, you can show some process work, how you got there. I think that that's the most important thing is show your process. <laughs> like your finish is important, but show how you got there. Yeah, very good. Um, how do you ask for favors from people in the network? Um, I sort of answered this a little bit yeah. by uh, linking something in the chat. Um, the, the main things are be polite, note your personal connection to them and manage their expectations. So let them know that you're going to be reaching out again. Let them know that you're looking for whatever kinds of connection and let them know how you're familiar with their work and why you admire their work, that, that kind of stuff. Um, and then to ask for a favor, it largely is, hey, I'm in this this situation. Where can this where can you help me or how can how can I get this thing that I need? Um, th- there's a little bit of sensitivity needed to not be rude, but like just being upfront with your intentions and not being sneaky about it is actually usually better. 
Yeah, and staying humble. Um, a lot of times I find that people are likely more likely to get the work if you're actually asking for feedback or trying to improve. Just because when you look at it and your target is not, hey, can you hook me up? It's more so how can I get better? Sometimes you're already there and they will notice you because when they look at your work, trying to give you some feedback, they notice that you are kind of already ready to start working. And therefore it's more likely for them to keep you in mind when they have something that's ready for um, assignments or you know freelancing and so forth. Don't ask yes or no questions. People yeah. <laughs> will want to say no to yes or no questions. Ask them what needs to happen. How do I X? I'm gonna point out how important community is uh, as an artist. And that's one of the things the, the of doing this for a long period of time. I mean, the community, you know, out of the uh, three, two, out of the seven instructors I showed you, uh, five of them at one point were a student at, at one of my educational programs. People I've become friends with, people I've working relationships with, and, and it's, these are the five that people see are guest speakers. A lot of them have, have been part of that community. I think I get questions all the time from people I haven't spoken to in five or six years, uh, just directly over the phone or something, but, you know, maybe, you know, a like or something on Facebook, but, but they rely on the people that are around them that work in the industry and being, you know, having a community and part of a community, very, very important. Um, what events do you recommend attending to meet and connect with senior artists? Lightbox would be my first choice uh, on, you know, the, the spectrum events that, that have happened. If they ever happen again, they, they've been great. There's the illustration masterclass and uh, Ilexcon out on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of entertainment conventions, you, there are artists sections where you can just show up i mean don't harass anybody or anything but they're tabling for a reason you know you can go they, uh, those awards uh, those entry show you know the the books i'm holding in my hand the society of illustrators and spectrum um uh, sila american illustration um they have awards nights um you don't have to win an award to go and it's all in on my side on the illustrator side most of the illustrators that got in tried to attend Many of the art directors are there. I mean, it's sitting. That's how I've met almost everybody in the industry. Is it being at the, the opening nights of the Society of Illustrators? Well, I, th I think it comes down. A lot of it is sort of personal research too into the companies that you want to work for and the people who can connect you to that because they're in the entertainment video game industry. There's a lot of artists who want to work for Blizzard. And this is not a knock against Spoon, but like what percent of those people who want to work for Blizzard know who Vivian is? Like Vivian is a connection and she's not that hard to contact. Like she has an art station, she has an email. It's like you can email her, but a lot of people who, class. <laughs> who want to work for Blizzard <laughs> don't know who Vivian is. And $90. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you yeah. exactly how to meet Vivian. I'll, I'll yeah. give people three events that they can go to Comic Con, PAX, GDC. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good list. PAX, yeah. I will thing. also mention, like, yeah. even if an artist you enjoy is perhaps not working on the IP that you're thinking of, they may have internal connections to the other IPs that might fit your art style. I've recently had an opportunity to, to talk to someone who, on Hearthstone regarding someone's portfolio that used to be in my class, um, she found her direction. And, you know, I was able to kind of see, you know, who knows who and, and who can give me a better understanding of what they're looking for on their IP. So they're not necessarily, you know, applying for what I'm doing, but somebody I might know have a connection to help you navigate where you need to be. So I think even if perhaps they're not on, they're not working on an IP they're working on that, that you want to work on, or maybe they used to work on something that you want to work on, they might still have those connections because artists, the community is quite small if you really think about it mm -hmm. and it works to get around. So, so somehow the Q&A has gotten longer since we started. <laughs> so. 
<laughs> so wow. we, oh, yeah, we are in a hole. We should. Can I yeah. burn through a few of them? Yeah, let's yeah, do it. Let's okay. Do it. Would do navigating it. social media and networking online be considered a soft skill the way I was describing them? No, that's a marketing skill, not a soft skill. Okay. Oh, I like Does that. age matter? Will art directors be disappointed to find someone in their 40s who is not very, dis very experienced? No. If you can do the work, you can do the work. I'll say. Um, can, I, can I do one real quick? Yeah. Um, there's a question that says, in the character design portfolio, the single study sketches, like profile sketch, et cetera, are also good to be shown, or just the sketches that are related to a full process of the relevant character we created. I would say any sketches are either in the iteration phase where you're showing the process, or they should be in a like a sketchbook section where you're just showing your sketchbook and not necessarily adding it as part of your portfolio. Uh, Here's one. Uh, are there any pieces that come off as deal breakers when you look to hire someone based on the portfolio? From the concept art side, if all I see are boobs and violence, probably a deal breaker. I'm sure illustration has their own rules because I know there's actually a market for that somewhere. Yeah, if your portfolio is completely unrelated to the job you're applying to, that's also a deal breaker just because it's very, very unrelated. Or if your style is way too stylized and you're applying to something grounded, you know, a lot of times that is also a no-go. And just because it's just too different. have a budget. They have the ability to hire anybody in the industry in most cases. Most times the budgets are good enough for people to work for them. It's your job as the emerging artist to know what they're looking for. Don't try to, re don't try to um, change what the art director needs. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> um, you have to confine. It, it, if it's not what you want to do, look for something else. It's out there. That's your. That's what I was talking about early. Understand the industry. Understand where you fit in. Um, someone, asked, someone asked about: uh, Is there a one size fits all course they need help in deciding? Uh, just to answer that, we have an illustration program and we have a concept art program. Uh, as far as your interest in those programs, these are just these are the experience of visual arts passages is, is highly specialized in that it is a mentorship. So you go in and you know, on John's side of it, which is the illustration program, you're going to outline your goals and our mentors are going to help you put together a plan to achieve those goals. What's that look like on the concept art side? I think but, I, uh, I, I wouldn't say there's a one size fits all solution to what you're trying to get. Um, my recommendation for anyone who's trying to make a career out of their art and like make their living with it is to try to identify which part of the process do I really enjoy because there's some people that really enjoy ideation and problem solving and finding cool visual solutions and they don't want to spend 80 hours rendering and painting the thing those people are really good concept artists people who are like I want to get like a good I want to like identify a key story moment and then I want to spend the next three weeks of my life painting it to be as beautiful as it can possibly be that's probably more of an illustrator so I don't think there's a one-size-fits-all answer to like which course you should do to be successful as an artist you should focus on what part of the process do you enjoy the most John, you had uh, Grace Aldrich in your class this last semester. She's been through the illustration program. She's she, and, and a lot of, uh, not a lot, but several of our students on the illustration side jumped over to the concept program. And then they come back to the, to the illustration program. They're, they're trying to better their skills all around. And it, you can be, you know, uh, you can take things uh, uh, a la carte that way. Here's, yeah. a, here's another question. Uh, this is, this is like a perfect- Is it related to me? Or if uh, not, there's go, another go one ahead. I can just knock out. Go ahead. Okay. We've talked a lot about portfolio, but are there any recommendations for a good CV to send for concept art or illustration position? Here's, here's what you need to know. The only things that matter, your portfolio matters than, more than your resume. The only things that matter on a resume are your published and shipped titles or your past publications or possibly awards that you've won. Nobody cares about your GPA. That's it. That is very true. GPA degree. Okay. I yeah. just, I have to ask, I have to ask this question from Terry because it's just a perfect like 
home run pitch for any of you to tackle. What are some good resources out there to develop your skills? <laughs> Anything you look at. I think a good way to practice well, at least for design, is always question why it's made that way or why nature made yeah. it that way. A lot of concept design is about form and follow function. So, yeah. and the reason I think they're why. asking, I think they're asking them for like specific Oh, online re online resources we are great resources <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> no, no I, I i understand yeah. it. i'm going to be very specific yeah um and this is how yeah. i feel about what we're doing and again i built my life around this thing <laughs> um if you want to if you want to learn the path as a concept artist starting with character design take our program you're not going to find yeah. you're not going <laughs> to find better information anywhere you're not going to find better better connection anywhere I'm not saying that we do everything, that um, there's all kinds of resources that, you know, figure drawing resources, but take my figure drawing class, different ways of looking at it. But there's all kinds of other resources out there that are good resources. There's things that Nomon offers. There's things that... Um, um, I can okay. get really. Specific. I can't even bring myself to say the name, Timmy, so I'm not going to say it. Don't say it. <laughs> I can get really specific, John. The yeah, most useful course slash time you could spend to learn design skills is actually the Wednesday night study hall. Like visual that, arts passage. Yeah, visual arts passage, Wednesday night study hall, because it's where all of the instructors come together to put their brains to each individual problem that gets raised. There, there are- Because some... you can post work and Lake will give you critique. I mean, <laughs> that too, but it's when Catherine <laughs> Lamb is showing up and when Dale Stefanos is showing up and John is there every week and we get to like bat it around and volley it back and forth that it gets really good. Well, and that's the great thing about this whole program is illustration and design skills are the same. The industries are different. How you want to target your portfolio is different, but the skills are the same. It's it's so much fun doing that. And it, it and I love listening to the other artists talk and I'm trying to guess what they're going to say or how they're gonna get there. The thing that's so amazing about it is the consistency of the answers. And if it's if it's about if it's about idea, it might it can it could be more personal with the and it might vary in different different directions will happen. If it's about the picture making aspect of it, it's almost always the same answer <laughs> and, and or sim, very similar solutions because it's consistency. This is acquired knowledge. This is not something that we're just pulling out of the air. It's something that, that, that we've spent a huge amount of time learning about. Um, so if- Well, it's I'm, really just, it's the application. Like design is design. If you're designing a picture, that's an aspect of design. If you're designing a character, the same rules are all there. You're just applying it to a differently shaped canvas. That's kind of the way I think about it. Here's the thing that gets me in trouble all the time at, with traditional art schools. And if you can't do what you're trying, what you're talking about or presenting, you don't really know the, the information. You have to be, mm -hmm. and as an artist, if you can't apply the concept or that understanding, if you can't show it in your work, you don't know it. And so uh, there's a lot of people that are teaching information that they don't really know how to do. Um, yeah. And I, I, I get furious about that. Anyway. I, have, I think I can answer three questions at once. Uh, awesome. Here, <laughs> you're my, you're my three here. Uh, <laughs> when deciding on a focus for concept career, fantasy, sci-fi characters, creatures, how do you pick a focus? If you lot, have a lot of interests, how do you choose what to focus on? And how did you find your professional focus that also feels authentic to yourself? Is this something that you identified mostly before or after entering the industry as an illustrator or concert designer? This has three parts to the answer, but it'll answer all three of them. First, um, that process of deciding on what you want to do is actually a hard thing. People think it's easy. It's not. You're going to be constantly redeciding that over and over and over again throughout the 60 plus years you're going to spend as a professional artist. That's not something you answer once. You're going to do it over and over again, and it's going to be just as hard every time you do it over and over and over again. The second nugget of wisdom I'll attach to that, though, is if you've been thinking about it as, ah, there's this smorgasbord that I have to pick one thing out of, that can be really intimidating. And so I like to flip it on its head. What would you be most heartbroken not to do? 
and think about like what's the thing that if you lost it would just like tug at your heartstrings forever because that's the thing you probably want to focus on okay i'm gonna i'm gonna answer what is, what is meant by functional art in your portfolio art that has the needs of the industry that's i'll give you a perfect example uh cover art is very different than interior art uh cover art is usually you know the job of a cover as a book cover is not to tell the story it's to sell the book it's to make it stand out on the kiosk it's to embody the story with look and feel and make it and 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 um make somebody interested to pursue it um if you put it and i always suggest to buy you know if you want to figure out function in a certain part of the industry, pick three artists that are doing the same function, whether it be, and put them side by side. Show it really small, maybe put it in thumbnail form. The function will jump out at you. Um, if you're looking at one, you get caught up in the aesthetic. If you're looking at three, you'll see the consistencies of what's happening. This is big dynamic picture making or it's quiet storytelling, whatever it is, that function is identified. If you if you find people that are multiple people that are doing it in the industry now. So it's an easy way to identify the function. I can answer two questions here. Uh oh, they just moved. Um, the first one, uh oh, I can't find it. It, it just moved for me. <laughs> Where'd it go? Give me one second. Oh no. <laughs> oh, it's, okay. So there was one about art station now how I go about like looking for um, artists. I know like earlier we touched we touched on that before uh, about like looking at your follows and like your favorite images and stuff. There's also just the front page. Sometimes I do go see like what is trending or you know what the communities that all hyped about. And sometimes those things will jump out at um, at us, you know, and we will be inclined to click. Um, and the other question was about switching. Gosh, I don't, I don't know the actual wording, but it was about like going from one job to another where the style is extremely different, which I can personally answer that because I just did that. Um, and of course, like while start saying uh, employee. So there's two things. Earlier, we also covered this as well. It's just that the, the skill set of being able to design regardless of the style is a skill set that you have, um, even if you're working on something that's super stylized or something that is very, very realistic. And so in that case, you know, the actual style of the artwork or the IP that isn't quite a problem. Um, and you can stay, you know, employed in your previous one while you make the transition to the next. And a lot of times there is something that you're already doing, even though it is visually different that the new IP or the new the people that are hiring for a new IP is looking for. So for example, my passion or my specialty is in pattern design as well as um, creating cosmetics. And that was something that um, you know, a new company might be looking for and they could come to me for that, even though you know, their IP or their overall look is not exactly the same or completely on the different side of the spectrum. Um, I think that's, yeah, I think that would be the answer for that. I've got a quick one here. How damaging is it to not have work shown or awards won on your CV? Don't think about them as damage. Think about them as bonuses. They're like power-ups. Mm -hmm. And they only start to take effect once you have a lot of them. Right. Um, yeah, if you have one, it's like, it can react like, oh, they only have one. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's an aggregate thing. It's yeah. like when your yeah. list of published titles is 30 things long, that's when it matters. I got a couple yeah. I can handle really quickly. How do illustrators know which industry they are most hireable? That's your job. <laughs> you, have to, you have to investigate and figure out what you want to do. Um, the, the portfolio should follow the need it, and, and follow the, it, it, you're making it for the industry. Um, don't put the cart before the horse. That's why in portfolio class, we identify who you're making the portfolio as the first, as the first part of that class. The other one uh, I can answer real quickly is, uh, do you see a place for traditional art in the illustration industry? I assume um, I'm understanding what traditional art is, uh, non-digital uh, drawing and painting. Um, in realism, oil painting, drawing from life, I have students that come from ateliers quite often. And the focus in the atelier was not narrative. The focus was not learning how to concept. The focus was not 
Um, obviously visual storytelling that fits into that, but um, the focus was also not composition. And so learning the pipeline of the illustration industry, the skill set that those people have get there really quickly because they have a high skill set. They draw and paint really well. Um, that's, that's skill and craft. That's one thing you can set aside if you have it, but there's also just as important as skill and craft is your ability to compose and problem solve. And so uh, you got to pair those things together. So yeah, it's very helpful to you. And there's some of my favorite illustrators or you know, somebody like Donato Giancola. Um, I don't know what to call Tyler Jacobson. Do I call him an illustrator? Or do I call him a concept artist? He does illustrator. both. Illustrator. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he does both. Um, but more, well, more, of a, more of an illustrator. Yeah. Um, but he's got, great, he's got great skills. Chris Ron's got great skills. There's all kinds of, of um, uh, places for that right now. Um, okay, next question. I can knock uh, off a few really fast. Um, can we talk about a wow piece we've seen from someone's portfolio? I'm going to say no. Just open Spectrum and go to ArtStation. <laughs> from page. <laughs> yep. Um, from, from our portfolios or for our student? I've showed you some wow pieces at the beginning of this. The, of oh, I guess that's the question. I think, yeah. oh. Man, I showed, I showed you a bunch. I, th I think I showed you nine or 10, well, maybe 12 or 13 pieces of rock star pieces from our students. Yeah. Um, winning professional um, in the professional yeah. community, getting accolade from the industry. And then uh, to answer this other one of, should you focus on concept art or illustration if you like horror or creepy characters? Either one, you pick. It's about process the way that John said it. Like, do you like the ideation phase or do you like the delivery phase more? That's it. Um, here's one. Beyond studying aspects of rendering characters, facial features, clothing, etc. What other subject have you found give the most profound impact on your grasp of drawing in totality? So for concept, the ability to think in 3D space without actually seeing the object is very helpful, helpful, especially if you're working in a situation where you have to hand your concept art to a 3D modeler, where they have to make it into reality. Uh, whereas when you are creating, I guess like you're creating concept art that is meant to go into another print medium, that might be a little bit different, but when it's going into 3D, it absolutely has to match in all views and you have to provide all the different views that you're creating. And 100% of the time, the thing that you're creating has not existed yet. So, so also perspective, of course. Hey, Blake, can you take a swing at this? Uh, would you say illustration and concept art are both, uh, both allow room to be abstract and experimental? Um, experimental, yes, on my point of view, not, you know, you you got to you 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 it's whatever you do as an illustrator it has to convey either a concept or a narrative and so the amount of abstraction you can bring to it is fairly limited i know people that can can, can distort things really well but there still has to be um representational in most cases i like, think this what, what was the question anybody oh. um it's gone now uh, oh, something no. about being experimental and abstract. Can you be experimental have, and abstract? I have, an, I have an answer. Okay, go ahead, John. Uh, it depends. You have to identify what you're trying to do, what your industry is, and which part of the process you're trying to fit into. Because concept art also includes Craig Mullins. Craig Mullins does a lot of very abstract painterly they're basically illustrations they're not usable they're not really usable for production you couldn't take a craig mullins paint most craig mullins paintings they would be difficult to like hand to a 3d modeler and say hey model this like there's a lot of unanswered questions in those but uh a lot of craig mullins concept art paintings their purpose is not to be for production that they are to establish a mood and a tone and that is a very particular part of the pipeline which is pre-production where if you're developing a new game or a new movie or a new idea whatever it is you need someone who can sort of like set the stage that everyone else can follow and so you could bring someone on like Craig Mullins who can 
paint a bunch of like moody paintings that are like very pretty maybe not super usable but they show what it's supposed to feel like and generally look like and then people can break that down later on into more concrete uh like clearly defined bits of design so I think maybe the I think the good word for that is you're trying to get people to buy into it you're usually selling an idea very at the very beginning of say a IP and you're right. trying to get stakeholders to agree that we should invest in this project and it sets up the overall tone and motif of what we're trying to make right which is the a... way I'd put it is pitch material gets the money moving. There you go. Lake is so much better at like summarizing things. Like... Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. I would say <laughs> the word I use is pre-production, but it's yeah. the same as like pitch, pitch material is mm -hmm. this is not art that's going to be made. This is art to convince people that they should spend money on this product. Yeah. So and sometimes yeah. it gets made if they fall in love with it. Yeah. That's true. It's, so if that's the kind of art you want to make, then you have to identify, like, is this the very specific part of the industry that I want to work in? And can I be really good in that space? The or... illustration world allows you to be extremely expressive. I mean, just take a look at Sterling Hunley's work. I mean, um, it's gorgeous and it, it could be very expressive painting at times. Um, Certain parts of the industry allow that. Still has a job to do, though. You know, just like, you know, what we were talking about with Craig Mullins. In fact, when you started describing that, I was thinking, is that the same Craig Mullins that I know? And then I then I got what you were saying. Um, yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, let's go on. Let's uh, let's get to another one. Here. Someone asked if there's an art station equivalent for illustrators. I would say definitely yeah. not at the size, probably not at the size of art station mm -hmm. and probably not as exclusive. Art station serves such a niche uh, purpose. I don't know that that exists for illustration. Illust illustration is piggybacking on a lot of social media platforms right now as part of it, but it's not standing on its own with its own platform. Is that, is that correct? That's correct, but there's still a lot. There's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of print organizations that you got to pay attention to in the illustration world. You got to pay. Right. But there's not like a digital platform. Is that right? Like, no, like you were going to say Twitter, weren't you? Is that when, what I heard? When you were talking about piggybacking on, on other platforms, Twitter's the one where I see the most. I, I feel like Twitter is the easiest to navigate also without getting- it's toxic as hell though. <laughs> it really is, but uh, I feel like with Instagram, you're dealing with like a yeah. much more addictive and harder to uh, isolate topics. So mm -hmm. like on Instagram, it's easier to get lost and like go down another wormhole. Whereas like Twitter, I feel like it's easier to like go to a hashtag and like, really i don't know but yeah you're right instagram about talks but it's not dead but it's still only supplemental like instagram can't be your primary platform because it's too right. easy for the program to push you out of people's feeds and you 100 john wh what's up <laughs> my my only jump into that is you should be strategic with how you engage with social media to connect yeah. with the people that you need to connect with but you should always be pursuing the thing that you want to do above all of that shit. Because Twitter is going to be a pain in the ass. Instagram is a pain in the ass. Art station is a pain in the ass. It's all yeah. a pain in the ass. So <laughs> you need to prioritize yeah. the art LinkedIn. that you want to make over any kind of like social media connection, doing the things that will get you views. Like, yeah. no joke. I mean, I know John and I aren't art directors, but no joke, LinkedIn, I've used that a lot mm -hmm. to connect with guest speakers. And guest yep. speakers, if you all think the guest speaker lineup is impressive, we have to book those people out a year in advance often. And it's because they're so busy. And I reach out to a lot of them on LinkedIn. Uh, we just recently hired one through LinkedIn. So, so the, um, the yeah. only addition I can add to that is the community that I have on Instagram uh, um, and a lot of the artists that uh, that I follow, that's about all that exists on um, in the in the social media side around my audience. Um, and so uh, I can't, you know, I 
I don't pay attention to LinkedIn. I, I, I like Timmy does. Um, I'm not, I, I don't pay attention to Twitter. Um, but there's a lot of the artists that are of that I'm interested in that I communicate on on Instagram frequently. There, you know, and I'll correct myself. There are a few. The, I when I think of ArtStation, I mean ArtStation is a uh, top. I think it's in the top 100 websites visited. Really? Wow! Really? I didn't know that. For sure, top 1,000. So yeah. it's like a colossal yeah. platform. Um, there mm -hmm. are illustration platforms that are not big, but are definitely worth like, you know, there's womenofillustration.com, which I highly recommend checking out. I'm pretty sure that that's the exact domain. If you Google that, you'll find it. It's, and it's a really cool direct directive uh, or directory of artists. Um, somebody just dropped the ispot.com. Um, I just would be cautious of anything that has a fee for creating a profile. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot out there still but it's just like smaller smaller communities so there's a, there's a big convention in kansas city coming up the icon convention um yeah. pay attention there'll be a, there'll be a bunch there's i saw the roster there's some good artists that are going to be there and i think too it, it really just comes down to doing your research and finding your clients in your portfolios because like art station is this massive website and it may may seem super overwhelming but if you send me a message on ArtStation, I'm gonna see it. So if you I do, <laughs> I'll okay. get to it eventually. Well, yeah, I never. I <laughs> well, Lake, do Lake doesn't care, but <laughs> <laughs> there's at least a chunk of artists who uh, are on ArtStation. Who, if you do your research and find like, oh, this is the guy working at that company who's in charge of this position, and I would like to do some work for them, then you can send them a message, and at some point there's a pretty decent chance they'll see you even though ArtStation is a huge massive platform it's not about just being noticed it's about being proactive and putting your work in front of the people who you want to see to talk about that in terms of concept i do believe there's a lot of concept artists out there that don't do any internet presence you'll be surprised where you have a team of five and there's like two people who knows you know, how to update your Instagram or something. Like there's there's a lot of people who only focus on the craft and be good at what they do first and then whether or not they have time for the other stuff later. So, you know, if you're really thinking about like trying to set up your social media and so forth, do make sure that that is not your primary yeah. focus because yeah. ultimately it's still your work and your capabilities that's gonna get you the job. Yeah, Let so me be very us, clear about yeah. ArtStation. ArtStation is not a social network. It is a portfolio website. It's nothing else. <laughs> like, don't think about it like social media. It's just there to host your portfolio. Yeah, yeah they they try to gamify it with that, I think, with like liking and stuff and commenting and stuff, but it's, no, a, really. it's a distraction, <laughs> right? Total distraction. It's just there to host images. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Victor's asking a question. When deciding on focus for concept, career, fantasy, sci-fi, characters, creatures, et cetera, how do you pick a focus, especially if you like all of the things? I feel like I touched on this earlier. It mm -hmm. really is like, what could you not stand not doing? Yes. It's gotta be the your first choice. And, it, and it, it, if they're all equal, which I don't truly believe they are, there's something that you naturally gravitate towards. Um, choose it uh then there's a couple of questions uh, oh, for, but before yeah, we move yeah. on oh sorry before we move on john like the exercise you give your portfolio class is actually a, an excellent exercise to find out what you would be most interested in at the moment where you're picking out those you know where you're picking out like who you actually tend to like or what kind of pieces you tend to like usually if you line them all together it, it gives you some kind of pattern oh yeah that's, I, I have that's discovered that's something helps to commit yeah, I've discovered something about concept artists in particular, but I think across the industries um, for the different disciplines of concept art, people actually get their emotional highs out of a different part of the process. Um, so environment artists, I've found, get their greatest degree of emotional response when they are including Easter eggs about the culture and history of the places that they're designing. Creature artists tend to get their most emotional highs when things begin to fit together properly and become believable. Same thing with vehicle people. And then character designers 
uh, tend to get their emotional highs when the character that they're depicting, they suddenly understand the decisions that those that character would make that they wouldn't make themselves. So if if you can identify which of those things like gives you emotional highs, that could also be a clue. So I think. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, just with the time, maybe we pick uh, two more questions from the Q and A. So Jakari and... kind of doubled up there, and I yeah, think I can knock out that first one real fast. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Uh, for artists aspiring to character design, how much of your focus should be on drawing from life? When you're studying, I believe it should be between a third to a half of your time. Yeah, you know, or there you draw, go. <laughs> draw from anything when you're not drawing yeah. from life. You got to learn how to draw from reference too. draw from yeah. photography. Drawing from life will teach you how to draw from, from photography. Um, there's more information drawing from life. Yeah, let's grab two more of those questions and then. Uh, and then I think we hit any... that top one. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Maybe just let's just get one more and then, uh, and then I think we can kind of do our closing statements. <laughs> uh, that second one's really interesting. Aside from characters and backgrounds, is there a particular subject of specialization that seems lacking in the industry but strongly in demand? I mean, it really is that soft skills thing. Like, despite how much we talk about how important it is, there's a lot of people that aren't good at it. Well, I think it's it's also, there's a lot of uh, people need to do more research as to what their opportunities are, because there's a lot of ways you can make art and get paid for it. Mm. And like, even for me, I... I kind of work as an art director, concept artist, illustrator kind of thing in another life. I think I would have a fantastic, happy time being a visual effects artist. That's a completely different career that I have never touched, never pushed myself towards. Like that's an entirely, almost an entirely different industry. Like it falls within video games, films, concept art kind of stuff, but it's a completely different skill set. So uh, I think there's a lot of different ways you can apply yourself. And it really comes down to what Lake was just saying is like, which part of the process do you really enjoy? Like, can you spend eight hours a day doing this thing and still be happy? That's really what you should focus on as an artist. You're reminding me of another thing, though. This is actually very specific. If you're interested in character design, it is sadly very, very rare to run into character designers that can actually represent multiple ethnic groups. Like somebody who can depict black skin tones and temperature zones of a face with specific morphological differences to like how the ocular cavity sits to how the nose is constructed because those things are different between ethnic groups and like uh for people to it's really hard to find people who can do that well and and also invent people from scratch because it's like anybody can copy an, an actor but like if you can invent a character whose likeness is not a real person's likeness that accurately depicts an ethnic group that's a rare talent and that's something you can also build on using your fundamentals. <laughs> if you don't have fundamentals, you can't really do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Timmy, I want you to take a swing at for artists lacking community and the money for a full coursing. What are some of the ways to sustain drive and focus and isolation? <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have so many options. You know, if your budget is almost nothing. Uh, you know, Studio Bridge is a platform that we have that's a membership platform that we have guest artists every Monday. We have a new guest artist. Vivian Costi uh, was just with us for a whole month and shared the ins and outs of what what uh, she does and, and what her career is like. So we've had John Nymeister, Lake Hurwitz. We've had Thomas Blackshear. Uh, it's I mean, the list goes on. Uh, and Studio Bridge is just another one of our platforms. It's, uh, I'll drop a link to it in the chat. Uh, what we're talking about today though, is our mentorship program. And that's actually, it's actually very affordable. And um, we, have, we have a partnership with a firm, which is a lending program. So if, you, if, you know, if you're looking at the price and 
like nine, $950 is too much. Uh, I definitely recommend checking out a firm. Uh, you can apply for lending at checkout and uh, they're pretty forgiving with their process. So I definitely recommend uh, considering that. Um, and then also I'm gonna drop a discount code in the chat right now. Uh, for any new students to the program, if you use draw more, you'll save $50. Uh, for the next, I didn't tell John about this, but for the next 48 hours, I'm going to make that $75 off. So uh, I'm going to update that right now before the end of the, the uh, webinar. Uh, so don't use it right now. Use it in a second uh, and you'll save $75. That's going to be good until uh, Sunday. So um, we really try to make this program like an incredible that. I mean, like we try to make the value very fair. Uh, we did this because we looked at traditional colleges and it pissed us off how much they charged for the deal that you got. It was a bad deal. We're not anti-education. We talk about this all the time, but if you go to the grocery store and bread is $50, it's a bad deal. <laughs> We're not anti-food. It's just a bad deal, you know? And so uh, I just highly recommend uh, checking this out and it's, it's more affordable and available than you think can i add to that briefly absolutely uh so yes i'm sure it it seems like a sales pitch that like yes you should sign up for a course because we have some really amazing teachers here and you are not going to get these kind of teachers at any kind of comparable rate anywhere else uh but also if your budget is literally zero dollars uh, do illustration isolation on Thursdays. Uh, it's a weekly figure drawing thing. And if you can spend an hour a week working on like just painting figures and trying to get better at the thing you're interested in, you're going to progress so much faster than so many people who have this vague idea of art, but don't have any concrete regiment of improvement. So like once a week, one hour figure drawing, huge for your artistic development. Highly recommended. Well, it's actually the 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 event's two hours long, so um, there you go. Twice <laughs> as much. You get twice that much for free. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's yeah. let's end it on that. I love that that uh, pitch by John, and I am going to say this that I truly mean this. These these are really dedicated teachers and dedicated to the industry, dedicated artists. And I consider all of them my friends. I consider them um, colleagues that I would, I would go to the mat for anytime. They're, they've been unbelievably supportive of, of, of me and my, our programs and of Timmy. And um, the fact that they're here right now is uh, amazing. So Thank you for spending your, uh, Lake, Vivian, John, for spending your afternoon. And everybody that joined us today, I, I really um, hope you found some benefit from this. Enrollment closes the 21st. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the only thing I'm gonna say is, is uh, that, uh, that discount is uh, published. So it's good to go. And that is, we are gonna cut that back. Uh, we will cut that back on Sunday. So don't, don't wait. Um, other than that, thank you everyone for joining. Yeah. John, John, great time. Excellent. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Happy Easter, everybody. Easter.